Mr. Bob's Railroad Workbench, where we talk about math, science, history, trains, and do it with all kinds of fun activities. Hi, I'm Bob Watsonberger, Mr. Bob, Education Director for the National Railroad Museum. If you're watching us on Facebook Live today, feel free to type in with a question. We'll answer those after the segment. Or if you just want to type in and let us know who you are and where you're watching from, that would be fantastic as well. And make sure that you like the National Railroad Museum's Facebook site. Today we're taking a little walk through the museum and looking at a little bit of railroad history in our collection. And specifically, we're talking about the General Motors Aero Train. Built in the 1950s, the early part of the 1950s, the Aero Train was a design that, well, in theory, was going to get us to take the train as opposed to driving in our automobiles of the time. It was the first time that General Motors had employed uh, their automotive design team to create the train, and the train that they created was a very lightweight, fast train for its time. Geared for 102 miles an hour, the coaches weighed significantly less than a standard railroad coach. Leading the General Motors design team was automotive designer Charles Jordan. He led the aerotrain design team at the age of only 27 years old. It was one of his first assignments after joining the GM design team, and Jordan felt it was one of the biggest thrills of his time with General Motors. What we want to talk about today is the fact that that GM design team borrowed a lot of design and technology from their automotive fields. On the screen here you see the 1951 LeSabre. Not the Buick LeSabre, they didn't start calling it a Buick LeSabre until several years later, but notice that curved windshield on the front of the LeSabre. You're also going to see that on the Aero Train. On the back end of the Aero Train, well, the GM designers took their lead from the Chevy Nomad station wagon. The back end of the aero train looks very much like the Chevy Nomad station wagon of that 1950s period. But something that we want to focus in on today is right out on the front of the aero train. You'll notice in that interesting front cowl there is a number of headlights. And if we zoom in close on that, you'll notice there's an array of actually five headlights. The two on the far outside are fixed and always pointing forward. The red light in the middle oscillates as a warning light, alerting folks that the aero train's coming down the tracks. And the two lights right over the red arrows that I have on the screen here actually turned corresponding with the direction that the front truck was turning so that as the aero train went around a curve, the light from the headlight swept around in the direction that it was going. Now, you might think, wow, new innovative technology used on the aero train. Well, not so. The idea of movable headlights had been around for a number of years before the aero train came into being. You see here a 1948 Tucker, and that singular headlight directly in the middle of the car, right above the red arrow, actually was uh, attached to the front wheels so that whichever way the wheels were turning that's the way the headlight would go. There are some reports and some evidence that the idea of moving headlights existed as early as 1904 or 1905. A car manufacturer in the state of Massachusetts at the time had a system using kerosene lanterns that was tied to the front wheels that would turn. But one of the first types with an actual headlamp is generally credited to the Tucker line of automobiles. Now, you may think in today's world, where did this wonderful technology go? Something that actually improves safety, improves driver vision. Well, it's still around, and there's a number of car companies that are actually offering a version of turning headlights these days. You can't exactly call them turning headlights. We've got to have a much more fancy term for them. On the screen is an example of Mazda's adaptive front lighting system. And today, using sensors on the front of the car, 
Also sensors as to the speed and indications as to which way the steering wheel is going to be turned. The lights not only move to correspond with curves, but also become brighter and dimmer in some cases, really adding to safety. So, an interesting little innovation that we saw on the front of the aero train, taken from other automobiles, the turning headlight still actually exists as an option on some cars today. You know, at the National Aero Museum, it's our mission to inspire lifelong learning by providing dynamic educational opportunities through the preservation of railroad objects, engaging exhibits, and innovative programs. As a nonprofit organization, we are supported by both public and private grants and support from our museum members. If you would like to learn more about how to support the National Railroad Museum or to become a museum member, visit our website, nationalrrmuseum.org. Hey, I'm Mr. Bob. Thanks for stopping by Mr. Bob's Railroad Workbench. We'll see you again soon.